So could a student who has an exam or a test to take, could that student experience anxiety even if they study, even if they prepare to the best of their ability? Well, the answer is yes, right? You see, the body responds to external things. The body also responds to internal things as well. So a person might have an exam, so that's an external thing in a subject matter, can be it geography, Spanish, French, English, mathematics. And because of that, that's an external exam, they may be considering how it affects their future. So how this exam may affect my future. Now, it may not be my future job. Now, in many instances, that is what it is. How passing or feeling this exam can affect my future employment or career path. But a number of times, it may not directly involve how I perform in this exam or this test, whether or not it will affect if I get the job that I want to in the future. Many times it's an assessment or test that is moving the student from one level or grade to the next. So the focus for the student is more or less what I am doing right now in terms of my performance on the exam and whether or not it will put me in the, the, the grade, whether or not I'll get the opportunity, opportunity, opportunity to be promoted or whether I'll have to stay back and rewrite the exam or if I do get promoted but I get promoted with a very low score, how I may view myself how others may view me, how the teacher, how the other students may view me, especially if the other students, a significant number of them, may have done far better than what that student or, 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 or how I may have performed. So I'm now having the external environment influence my internal. So I might start becoming very nervous, anxious, I worry a lot and even if I may have prepared I may use information from the past to even further contribute to the way I feel the anxiety I feel or the stress I feel so I may recall in the past I had a similar subject like this and when I went to the exam I didn't do well in some situations it might be that I had the same course that I wrote a few months ago or probably a year ago and I didn't pass and that's why I have to write it over again. So even if I prepare, I can feel a sense of anxiety that I may not do well. Now there's no real way to predict what the question will be on the exam. You will know of course the content area, obviously the teacher me or the professor or the lecturer um, may say okay these are the content areas these are the five areas that's gonna come one two three four five these these definitely gonna come or at least these of these five areas at least three of them will come and two well may not come um, or if the two comes it might be a bonus bonus section or something like that so there's no true way to predict in the moral sense of the word because some students somehow sometimes cheat and they get they get the answers to the specific question before the exam but we're not talking about that we're talking about you knowing for certainty that this question is going to come because you don't know that there's added pressure on your system added pressure on your brain, added pressure on your body. And sometimes what happens is the inability to cope with the stress, the inability to self-regulate the thoughts, 
you find that we start feeling a certain way and we start behaving a certain way. So our thoughts may tell us, you're sure you're going to pass this exam? And we may start feeling afraid, anxious. We might get annoyed or frustrated. And we start behaving in such a way where either we behave in terms of our heart start beating faster, um, our mouth gets dry, or we start forgetting. Our memory seems to be eroding very quickly. And all of that could be contributing to the way we are feeling anxious before the exam and even sometimes during the exam. So what are some tips to help us to reduce significantly because we may never be able to eradicate totally. Maybe some students could, but the general population of students who are going to write an exam will feel some level of stress. Some more than others will feel a, a level of anxiety, some more than others. But how students react to what they're feeling or what they're experiencing, that will make a significant difference when they go to write the exam. So, well, one thing is certain. When you go into the exam, all that you will have prepared for before, the content you will have gone through, the questions you will have gone through, the notes you will have studied and read, the various techniques you may have employed in order to memorize or to understand or to conceptualize the information. All of that now, you're going into the exam and it is either you know it or you don't. Now there are sometimes you may know the answer but the question was phrased in such a way that you perceive that the question was asking something else. And sometimes it's only after the exam you realize, wait a minute, I knew this or no. But it's how the question was phrased. You misinterpreted the question. But generally speaking, when you go into the exam, it's either you know the subject matter or you don't. It's another question of whether or not you're able to interpret the question to put down what you have in your head on paper or to type it or what have you. Or if it's an oral exam to speak so you go into the exam you're going to the exam what are some of the strategies or techniques you could use now if you can practice these things sometime before the exam it will even be better for you at days before months before one of the thing has to do with trying to get rest now some students, what may happen is that they may not get sufficient rest because they are studying for the exam, especially if that particular exam is worth a significant number of points or if that particular exam will get them from one level to the next. So it's important. So a student may stay up late maybe for several days but you have some students they will stay up either a day or two before and they will cram now it's not the best way but will you be able to remember information the answer is yes if you cram you will remember information and be able to write an exam in some cases and pass but of course you will know the effects of cramming some hours before, during the exam, and even after the exam, where you will realize that you you are easy, easily able to forget the information. So it means, therefore, that you need to get sufficient rest and space out your study. So it means you have to start early enough, and not just early in the day, but early in the weeks ahead or weeks before or months before so you're studying but you're spacing out your study so if you're studying let's say a specific subject two hours a day every other day you may study or every day you may study for two hours that particular subject next day two hours next day two hours next day two hours next day two hours 
So the objective is that as you continue to go over the information in a systematic way, again and again, you are more likely to create stronger connection in the brain, understanding, conceptualizing, will develop. And therefore, regardless of how the question may be stated, you will have understood significantly what is required to put down on paper or to respond in an oral way if it's an oral exam. Another thing has to do with use of questions. Now, more times than not, the exam will have been given many times before. And in some situations, teachers, professors, lecturers, or tutors may give you possible questions or types of questions that will come. So you are able to ask yourself these questions over a period of time. Again and again, you'll ask yourself the questions. You'll be able to look at it from different angles and therefore your understanding of the content will increase. So that's another technique you can use that will help to reduce significantly your anxiety as you prepare for an exam. Another thing has to do with utilizing things like mind maps. They are good memory aids. What seems to not work well is trying to read your notes again and again and again and again and again, over and over. Now, will some things stick? Yeah, it will. But it will be learned like a poem. It will be learned like the alphabet. So, in the alphabet, most persons, if not all, in the language that you speak, let's say you speak English, from A goes straight to Z. You will be able to see the alphabet. But if a person was to ask you what letter comes after T, or what letter comes after M, or what letter comes after a Q, will you be able to quickly respond by retrieving that information from the brain? Now, for most persons I've come across, the answer seems to be no. They always have to start from A and go to that letter and then think about what is the next letter after that. But if you learn the alphabet in such of a way that it is not just by singing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you go up the road. But you learn it in such a way that, okay, what letter is after M? What letter is after T? What letter is after S? If you learn it like that, all the alphabet, and then you probably even try to learn it backwards. And then you try to learn it from a specific letter go forward and a specific letter come backward. You will be placed in a position where it will become very easy that they call a letter and you will know what letter comes after or what become or what letter comes before. Now that kind of learning will take longer. Hence the reason why utilizing that method requires that you start weeks in advance or months sometimes in advance in preparation for the exam. But the guarantee is that you are placed in a better position to actually understand the subject matter better, the coursework better. And when it comes to test taking, your memory, your understanding, how you will have conceptualized the information will have increased significantly. So you are more likely to pass the exam. And with that thought and that level of confidence, your anxiety level, your worry level will decrease significantly. Another technique that I will suggest has to do with getting exercise. Now it's true that sometimes just as a student, you inside a lot, you're studying a lot and Exercise is not always something on the forefront of our minds. 
we, we know that if you get exercise, you'll feel better, you'll feel good about yourself, you'll produce all these beautiful hormones in your body that will help you to self-regulate and so forth. But sometimes we don't always do it. But getting exercise, in addition to helping our bodies work properly, it will help our minds to work properly. You see, once you have good supply of oxygen in your blood, you are more likely to have your brain working better. And that's just a known fact. Once your brain is working better, you're able to take in information better, code information better, you're able to retrieve information better. So it's really important for us to get sufficient exercise. And once we get the exercise and we're able to perform better at our study, again, our confidence level goes up and our anxiety or worry goes down. So when we go in towards, when we go for an exam, we're going for the exam knowing, okay, I'm going to do my best. And I may not know everything on this subject matter, but what I know, I really know it. Another point that can help us to reduce anxiety has to do with the nutrition that we're taking into our bodies. Now, it's always good to talk to a medical practitioner or dietitian uh, or someone in the field of, of medicine or of diet to find out exactly what are some of the nutrients that you should be feeding your body, feeding your brain, feeding your muscles with. Because once you feed yourself with the right amount of vitamins, right right amount of minerals, um, right amount of every nutrition that your body needs in order to function properly, then you will automatically function properly. Now it doesn't mean that you won't get sick. It doesn't mean that you won't get tired. As human beings, we get sick, we get tired. Sometimes we get stressed out, even though we are taking all the best supplements. And that's just how we are built. However, when we do take the right amount of nutrients in our body, we perform better when compared to someone who does not. And if we are studying, remember, our brain utilizes at least 20% of the energy in our bodies and that's a lot that's quite a lot a matter of fact so it means that you have to constantly be feeding the brain the various nutrients um, that definitely will help to reduce anxiety now another thing that can help reduce anxiety has to do with having the right people around you. Now it's true that sometimes having the right people around us it's not always possible. Sometimes we have toxic people around us. Sometimes we have people around us who do not believe in the, or on the path, believe in the path that we are taking. So you might be a student, you want to do your education, you want to go into a specific field, you want to probably be in uh, mechanics, or you want to do um, something in machinery, or you want to do something in chemistry, or you want to do probably something in mathematics, mathematical field. Maybe you want to go into the medical field, you, know, you want to be a writer, an author, and there are some people around us that may not support the goals that we have for ourselves. So we might be going to do an exam, but we may not feel as confident as we should. We may not feel motivated as we should because somewhere in our minds, to the back of our minds, to the forefront of our minds, we're thinking, why am I even doing this? After all, other people don't believe in me. Why should I even believe in myself? And what sometimes happens is that because of that added pressure we put on ourselves, we go into the exam believing, we go into the exam with a sort of self defeating way of thinking. And that in itself can contribute to 
anxiety, worry, and stress. And if you're anxious, if you're worried, if you're overly stressed, preparing for an exam or while in the exam, then you reduce significantly how good you could have performed. So, yeah, there are quite a bit of information in this video pertaining to how you can reduce stress, how you can reduce anxiety, how you can reduce excessive worry when it comes to test taking and studying for exams. But if you utilize all or maybe some of the information, suggestions, techniques, tips, strategies in this video, you are more likely to perform well on your exam because you will have been doing all these things, studying appropriately, putting in the time, energy and effort and no doubt you will see good results if you do that. So that's all for today. Like, subscribe, feel free to leave a comment, let me know what you think about the information and share this video with at least one friend. So all the best. Take care.